out of the blue, how animals evolved from prehistoric seas. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. This is Hector. Welcome to the first in a series of quick videos about the book Out of the Blue. We're going to meet some awesome prehistoric animals, see cool fossils, and explore how animals came out of the ocean, onto land, and then sometimes went back again. Let's dive in. First, we have a question for you. Which two of these animals are the closest relatives? Two have rubbery fins and ocean homes. They seem like close cousins, but they're not. How can that be? This question took me on a journey to understand how all types of animals originally came out of the ocean. Yes, even poodles, Hector. It's a big question, a huge question, and I promise we'll find the answer. But how do scientists know how things happened so long ago? How do they study prehistoric life and the diversity, the many, many different types of plants and animals that have existed since life began billions of years ago? The number one answer, fossils. Fossils are the remains of ancient life. They come in different types. They can be the shapes of plants or an animal's body. They could be animals trapped in fossilized tree sap called amber or they can be trace fossils like this dinosaur footprint, even fossilized poop called coprolite, like these giant ground sloth droppings. As they dig fossils and carefully prepare them, scientists called paleontologists look back into the past and uncover the stories of deep time, when animals lived long ago, when and why they disappeared, and when lots of plants and animals died off in a mass extinction. They do this by determining the dates and types of the rocks that surround the fossil and how the rocks are arranged in layers, oldest at the bottom, younger ones at the top. They figure out what environments were like too, dry or wet, forest or desert, times when climates were steamy hot or icy cold. So how did it all begin? Life began in the oceans with microbes, tiny life forms too small to see without a microscope. There were lots and lots of microbes, just as there are today, but they were all in the ocean. The earliest microbes date back three and a half billion years, billion with a B, and those fossils are called stromatolites. Stromatolites are formed by microbes called cyanobacteria that live in layers on the sea bottom, like a rug on your floor. The cyanobacteria trap particles of sand, forming lumpy blobs that eventually turn into rock. They're the first evidence of life, and they're still found in salty coastline waters today. Well, life stayed slimy for a long, long time. Eventually, one microbe swallowed another. Gulp! Some microbes began making lots of oxygen, like part of the air that we breathe. Thank you, microbes! Earth warmed up, and life became more complex. Around 600 million years ago, those little microbes developed into some of the strange, squishy animals that show up in the book. How do we know? The fossil record, of course. The fossil we call Charnia looks like a fern, but it's not. The fossil we call Dickinsonia wriggled through microbial mats on the sea floor like a floating pizza. Were these things plants, animals, aliens? Nobody really knows, but they definitely were not like anything that's alive today. But stay tuned. In the next quick video, we'll see how the animal groups of our world took shape. Life is about to explode in the prehistoric seas. Bye for now.